Okay, it's debugging time. So this video board I made using the Texas Instruments graphics chip from, I think it's late 70s, early 80s, something like that, that goes on this Western Design board for the Retcom 87 project. This one works. This is an older version of the board. This is a newer version of the board that, as you can see, isn't working. But I'm pretty sure I remember that this did work at one point. So I need to figure out what's going on here. Whoops, I did something dumb. I forgot that when I made the revision of the board, I actually added these jumpers. So you can select the address range that you use to reference the chip. And I did that so you could stack two of these boards and actually do a dual screen thing. And the one I'm thinking that works is probably the one I lent to one of my students to work with and not this one. Because if you notice, this one doesn't have jumpers. So let's add jumpers. Okay, anyway, that worked. In my office, I have some shunts somewhere that, you know, are the little rectangles you just put on top, but I couldn't find them. So we tried this and that worked. So the next thing I want to do is to make sure the addressing for the sort of theoretical second screen works. So we're going to switch the jumpers and change the addresses. Okay, the way I set up the logic here is that the fourth address pin is what controls the board select according to the jumpers. Let's see. So A4, that would correspond to putting a one in the second position in hex. I really should take better notes. Anyway, I think to access the board with the second set of jumpers, I need to change the C here to a D. So that is the proper addressing for the second board style of configuration. So I labeled it on this board V0 and V1. So in theory, we should be able to make two boards, have one of them jumper to V0, the other jumper to V1, and do a dual screen thing. That's exciting. Here's an alternate little test pattern that my son made. And here my son made a brick wall. And it looks like the chip is quite happy to drive this little tiny LCD too. That's nice. So we could theoretically write a program that's sort of like we old Wii U video games that could communicate between two screens at once, which is nuts. I don't think, like, dual yeah. screen compatibility was introduced until, like, what, 1990, late 90s. Something, games. yeah, you would not generally see that in 1980s computers. But yeah. Now, this board is pre-wired. This is the old version of the board. This is hooked to use that C0, C1 address. This is currently wired to use the D0, D1 address, but if I could find the shunts in my office, we could actually hook both of these up and test it. 